Hello there, welcome to Brown Max Movie Talk. Now with the release of Avengers Endgame, which I of course have seen, um, please do check out my review for that if you haven't already. I figured it was time to do a ranking video. Now I have done a couple of these in the past with Marvel movies. I tend not, I, I don't like to do one every time a new Marvel movie comes out, but I do like to do them when we get that Avengers movie, you know, when we get the, the, the latest Avengers movie, to me that feels like they've capped off. Yeah, it's a landmark film. The Avengers movies are landmark films and, and that's when I like to do them. And obviously with Endgame, we do wrap up a lot of stuff that has, you know, been building for, well, ever since Iron Man. Uh, so it does feel like a good point now at which to, yeah, to do another one of these rankings. 22 films. I'm going to start with my least favourite and work my way to my favourite. I do want to just say right up front, the lowest score I have given a Marvel film, so the, you know my, my number 22 on this list, still gets a 4 out of 5, okay? I like every single one of these movies. There isn't a single one of these movies that I wouldn't watch again. Uh, so I'm a fan, absolutely, 100%. Marvel definitely know what they're doing. Uh, they, they've, yeah, they've got this. If anyone has, they have. Um, so yeah, don't for a second think that because a film is low down on this list that I don't like it, you know? Four out of five. That's not something to be sniffed at. The 22 movies, I'm not gonna beat around the bush. I'm gonna try and whiz through it as fast as possible. Otherwise we'll be here forever. Uh, but yeah, let's go. Starting with number 22. And number 22 for me is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Loved this film when it first came out. I came out of the theater on a high from it, just highly entertained. But it's one of those that has really diminished with repeat viewings. Uh, you know, sitting in the comfort of my own home, it's just, I, yeah, it feels bloated, too much so, and there are some emotional beats on it that really needed chance to breathe, but instead they kind of ripped in there with humour and, and ruined some emotional moments. Still a good film, still highly entertaining, but like I say, my least favourite of the bunch. At number 21, we've got Iron Man 2. This is what I consider the first half to be one of the best comic book movies ever made, uh, followed by the second half, which is totally generic, um, kind of, yeah, retread of the first Iron Man film. If, if the second half of this film had been as good as the first half, this, this could very well be my favourite Marvel film. Uh, yeah, Whiplash, great villain, but once he was out after that uh, race racetrack fight, he should have stayed out. Number 20 is Spider-Man Homecoming. I really didn't like this film all that much uh, in comparison to the rest of the MCU when I first saw it. Uh, I have seen it again recently, and I, yeah, when I, when I first saw it, I gave it a three out of five. Um, but it, it, again, it's gone up to a four. I do like it. I don't like the colour palette. Uh, I, 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 yeah, it feels really pastel uh, coloured. Um, it, like it's probably the worst kind of colour grading for me when it comes to all the Marvel movies. Uh, I think there's an incredible villain in Michael Keaton's Vulture. I just think that the thing that lets it down most for me is that half of the humour, half of the jokes really don't land for me. Number 19 is Ant-Man. This is another one I wasn't as sold on the first time around, but it did get better. This is, this is basically uh, a, an indictment, a ringing indictment for second watches, you know, for, for not judging things uh, completely on, on the first time around. Uh, yeah, opinions do change. But uh, Ant-Man, it, it, it does kind of feel like a bit of a retread. Guy makes a suit, another guy wants the suit. It feels a bit smaller scale, despite the fact that uh, yeah, I mean that that was an unintentional pun. I wasn't even going there. I was I, honest to God was not going there. I just realised that was an unintentional pun. Yeah, it does feel small scale. Um, yeah, moving on. Number eighteen is Captain Marvel. I really enjoyed this film. I liked it quite a lot. I like some of the twists in it, particularly one involving Ben Mendelsohn's villain. Um, I won't say any more than that in, in case you've not seen it, uh, but yeah, 
I really enjoyed it. I, I'm not quite as down on Brie Larson as a lot of people seem to be. Although revisiting it, revisiting it I, I can see what ta people are talking about. She, she doesn't emote that much in it. Uh, but I, I, I still like her. I like her in the role. It's mainly a buddy cop movie between her character and Nick Fury. And it works on that level, I think. When they're t those two are together on screen doing stuff, investigating, it, it really is quite a high point. I, I enjoy it. At number 17, we've got Thor The Dark World. Uh, now, the, the biggest letdown of this film is the villain, the main villain, the Dark Elf. Really great design, looks incredible, uh, but just, yeah, a non-event, really. Christopher Eccleston in the role. I, I can't blame him. It's more what he's given to do. Um, he's just a world dominator. It's totally uninteresting. But where this film does succeed is every time Thor and Loki get together. Seeing those two brothers going on this adventure, kind of at loggerheads, but still an undercurrent of love for each other. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's really good stuff. Number 16 is Ant-Man and the Wasp. I thought this was a pretty big improvement on the first one. I, I thought Evangeline Lilly was better in this one. I, I felt found her character to be a bit too cold in the first one, whereas in this one, she's a bit more playful. I do like the relationship between her uh, and Scott Lang more in this one. Throw in Michelle Pfeiffer, who I've always been a big fan of, and a villain that I actually give a toss about. I think the villain in this is much better than the villain from the first one. As I, I say, like Marvel does have a problem, or they did have a problem. They've definitely upped their game in recent years, but uh, they had this whole string of, of time when villains were a bit, you know, they were just world dominators and nothing more. And I think in the first Ant-Man, yeah, it's just a guy who wants power. Whereas here, the villain has genuine motive. You can sympathize with her, even though not condone, condone her actions. And they're always the more interesting villains to me. At number 15, we've got Thor, the first Thor film. Uh, yeah, just Kenneth Branagh did an amazing job as director in taking what is really a, a silly concept and introducing it into what was a fairly grounded world, you know, with Iron Man and Hulk. I mean, I know they're, they're still quite out there, uh, but they're, they're still, there's still a level of earthly believability to them. But no, go to another planet of gods and, and just, yeah, Greek mythology, not Greek mythology, Norse mythology. Um, and it's just like, yeah, it's, it's, it has the extreme potential to be really silly and stupid. Number 14, just marginally above the first Thor, is Thor Ragnarok. Uh, I think this one wins out just because of how much fun it is. Again, there's a weak villain. Uh, despite the fact they've got Kate Blanchett here, um, it, it is just that world domination thing. But it's an adventure movie in, in the truest sense. You've got Thor going on this adventure, bumping into all manner of different characters um, and just, yeah, growing essentially a team of his own, kind of like a mini Avengers, but one that he's constructed himself. Um, but yeah, I, I really like it. It's fun. Again, there are emotional beats that maybe should hit harder, such as the death of Thor and Loki's father. Uh, but, uh, but no, th this is definitely emphasis on the fun. Um, that is both its strength and its weakness. Uh, but if, if you you know if you want to stick a Marvel film in that isn't you know isn't about the heavy stuff, but is more just about let's just have a good laugh, have a breeze with it, uh, then I'd say Thor Ragnarok. And number thirteen, yes, it's the first ever comic book superhero movie to be nominated for a Best Picture. Uh, like I say, this is halfway up my list, more than halfway. Uh, so I like it. I clearly like it. I like it a lot. Um, but it is overrated uh, to, you know, to be nominated for Best Picture when you think about all the, the comic book movies that haven't. Uh, but hey, that aside, it is still a very good film. I like the villain quite a lot. I don't think Killmonger is quite as strong a villain as a lot of people make him out to be. I don't think that performance... Um, by what's his face, Michael Jordan, Michael B. Jordan is quite as strong 
as, as, as people make it out to be. And that's not a diss on Michael B. Jordan because I thought he killed it in Creed 2. I thought he delivered an amazing performance in that film. So I know he's capable. I'm just, I'm just not as, uh, yeah, I'm not quite there like, like most people. But push that to one side. What this film really does have going for it is the world building. Uh, Wakanda is an amazing, beautiful place. You know, a really great creation. Uh, you can really feel the culture that is embedded there. Uh, just, yeah, it feels real. That's that's the thing. Uh, so, yeah, great job from Ryan Coogler. I do think some of the special effects are a bit, meh, kind of, oops, a bit ropey at times, some of the CGI, and that kind of makes the end battle sequence fall a little bit flat for me personally. But hey, it's it's still a great film, still an incredible film. Uh, and, and I don't think I'd be quite as hard on it if it wasn't for all the Oscar talk and, and nominations that it that it got uh, <coughs> when uh, <coughs> Dark Knight <coughs> didn't get a nomination for Best Picture. But hey, I'm not bitter. At number 12, we've got Doctor Strange. This is a film that if you really look at it, if you start to kind of come to it with a logic head on it really does fall apart you know you got to ask that if people have these certain powers where they can move buildings why not just get two and go splat but let's ignore that for one minute and just say actually the visuals in this are incredibly mind-bendingly cool uh, a little bit like inception i think inception definitely uh yeah i think this film owes a debt to inception absolutely I think after Inception, I think Marvel probably thought, hmm, we could use that, yes, for Doctor Strange. Uh, and, and I'm glad they did. Benedict Cumberbatch is great in the role. Uh, I loved Tilda Swinton in this movie. I, I mean, I love Tilda Swinton anyway. I think she's an incredible actress. I'm, I'm really glad they got her, uh, despite some of the, yeah, the, the, the negativity around it when she was cast, you know. But, uh, but no, she... she she walks away with that role. She does an incredible job. I think the villain as well is pretty good. Mads Mikkelsen is great. Uh, he he is kind of verging on that line of being that yeah the mad with power kind of guy. But I think maybe because Mads Mikkelsen sells it, I don't know. There is still something there within him. You still feel his motivations. Uh, he's he's a bit of a religious zealot, and I think maybe it's that angle that kind of gives him a bit more kudos over the. Yeah, the people like the Dark Elves of the world and stuff. But uh, but yeah, um, very good film, great special effects. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with Chiwetel Ejiofor's character, a favourite actor of mine. Uh, and yeah, he looked like he was going to the dark side towards the end of this one. So I don't know. I don't know anything about his comic book origins, but I'm assuming he's going to become a villain. So I, I'll be happy to see where they take that. At number 11, we've got The Incredible Hulk, probably the most underrated. We've got another one coming up, actually, but I think Incredible Hulk is, yeah, severely underrated. Um, I, if, if, if you grew up watching the 70s TV show, I mean, I, did, I, I wasn't a kid in the 70s, but I was in the 80s when they did a lot of reruns. And I remember that show, The Incredible Hulk, and this film very much models that show. It has a very similar kind of flavour to it, you know, Man on the Run trying to find a cure, um, being pursued by the military. <clears throat> so, yeah, it, it's 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 very good action film. I think Tim Roth's villain is really great, both in human form and CGI monster form at the end. Uh, I think I probably prefer him in Tim Roth form because, hey, it's Tim Roth and he's a really great actor. Uh, but, yeah, it's nice to see that smack down at the end. Um, and I did like Edward Norton in the role. And number 10 is the film that started it all, Iron Man. Uh, yeah, just oof, great. I mean, like, we're into, like, the, yeah, four and a half star territory now. You know, we, we, we just, yeah, it's an incredible film. You know, released the same year as my favourite film, The Dark Knight, which should have won Best Picture. Um, but uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's it's... It's all down to Robert Downey Jr. and John Favreau who directed it. You know, uh, again, steering the ship without there being any universe to speak of. John Favreau really had to set the tone, and he did a marvelous job. Um, but uh, yeah, Downey Jr. 
they trusted in him, uh, they gave him a shot and he delivered. At number nine, and this is the one that I was saying was probably, probably the most underrated, it's Iron Man 3. And I know a lot of people are gonna say, sacrilege, how can you put Iron Man 3 above Iron Man, the first Iron Man? Uh, primarily, it, it is because I'm a Shane Black fan. I think, yes, he dropped the ball with the Predator, but everything else with his name on, I pretty much liked in what, in some way or another. Um, but I, I loved I loved this. I, I just it really caught me off guard. The whole twist with the Mandarin. I came out like everyone else saying, you, know, you can't do that. You can't do that. You you But then when I thought about it, I was like, that's a ballsy move, you know? That's that's Marvel often get accused of playing it safe. And then when when they do something like this, people are like, What are you doing? You can't do that. So no, I loved it. Ballsy move. I think Shane Black does a tremendous job with the humour. Uh, he has a real dark kind of sensibility about the, the, the humour he puts in his movies, which I enjoy, you know, call me, call me a dark-hearted person. But yeah, uh, no, I, I, I really love Iron Man 3. I like the twists, the turns, I like the villains in it. I, I even like Guy Pearce in it, uh, you know. Um, I think he's really great in it as well. So... What can, I, what can I say? I have a blast with it. I think the action's really incredible. I think the Mandarin, um, before we find out he's not the Mandarin, is, is incredible. But then he's, he's incredible when we find out he's not the Mandarin, but for different reasons. Uh, just because it's, it's such a, you know, what the heck moment. Uh, but yeah, Iron Man 3, I do. I, I put it slightly, slightly, slightly above Iron Man. And I can totally understand totally understand why anyone would put the first Iron Man above it. It's just that I personally, if I'm going to stick one of them on, it's probably going to be Iron Man 3. At number eight, we've got Captain America, the first Avenger. I think this one is incredibly underrated uh, as well. I think it caps my guy, basically. When it, when it comes to the MCU, uh, Thor is the one I find most entertaining, primarily because of Chris Hemsworth. Uh, but Cap is the one who I I most root for, the one who I agree with most, the one who I relate to, uh, the one whose moral core I am drawn to. I just yeah, I like his old sensibilities. Uh, so yeah, uh, I I think that particularly the first half of this film. I mean, it's, it's not like Iron Man 2, where the first half is so much better than the second, and it's just like two two completely different movies. But I do think the first half of this film, the build-up, the, the, the way they reveal um, Steve Rogers' character, you know, the way they build him up as a character before he's given the superpowers, it really makes you feel invested. Uh, incredibly so. Uh, the film's got one of my favourite villains of the MCU as well, Red Skull. Probably my favourite villain after Thanos, to be honest. Uh, but, um, yeah, I love it. I, I love the showdown. I love the emotional gut punch of him not being able to make that dance. It, it is super underrated, I think. when it comes, Particularly when it comes to phase one. This is one that I often see down on the bottom of the list. I, I don't get it. I really don't. Uh, for, for me, Captain America is the most engaging character um yeah and he doesn't have the arrogance of like iron man i know a lot of people have the fun with iron man but for me he's a bit too arrogant but uh but yeah no i i love the first avenger a lot more than most as you can tell because it's at number eight and number seven is avengers age of ultron definitely the weakest of the actual avengers movies but still Really great stuff. Uh, it's something that I was a little bit critical of when, when I first watched it and I did my review. I rushed and got my review out there. And I realised the criticism I had was, was unfounded because when I watched it again on, on second viewing, there was a line of dialogue that I'd missed um, which explained the thing I was criticising. So, yeah, that made me feel a bit foolish. But I like it. I really do. I think uh, Ultron himself is a really great creation, really great villain. Um, yeah, no, I, 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 I don't get the criticism. Number six is Guardians of the Galaxy. Really great film. Uh, this is another one. This, this happens a lot with the MCU, it seems. It's another one that really grew on me. Uh, I, 
I think a lot of it is down to hype, you know, you get this hype machine, whenever whenever a new Marvel film comes out, it's, there's this big hype machine, and I, th I think I'm always turned off by that, I go in looking for flaws, I guess, um, and I think I did that with, with Guardians, uh, and then the, again, second time around when I watched it, it, I saw what everyone else was seeing, I, I yeah, it, it was, it was top-notch stuff, really great, love this core group of characters, absolute misfits, shouldn't work, but it does, uh, you know, they shouldn't work together, but they do. Uh, Drax, for me, is just hilarious, he's up there with Thor, Drax, just, just from the entertainment level, just because he's so stupid. It's a great film, the humour is spot on, there's not a bum note, like, like it, with the second film, it just felt like they just really went large with it, just like it got a little bit over bloated. This one, the story still feels pretty grounded. It doesn't go. It doesn't go too out there. Um, it, it keeps it about the characters. It keeps it about this core group of characters, and and them getting together. And and I think it's yeah. That's what makes it a real success. And number five is the Avengers. First time we got all these characters together. You know, it's just it was like yeah. They did with superheroes what Universal did with, with the monsters way back in the 30s and 40s. And it was like the first time really some, you know, a big studio had certainly ever done this with comic book movies. But uh, first time they've done it since, you know, back in the 30s and 40s with, with the major franchises. You know, putting all these different major characters together and making it work. Giving each of them their, their due, you know, their, their moments to shine given loads of character development and stuff. I think if anybody suffers, it's Hawkeye. He doesn't quite get given as much to do as everyone else. They made up for that in, in later films. Um, but but beyond that, yeah, it's, it's pretty faultless. It's, it's, it's an incredible feat. Uh, and, it, and it showed, you know, for the first time, the true potential of, of where they could go with the MCU. Number four is Captain America Civil War, which may as well be called Avengers 2.5. Uh, it has most of the Avengers in it. It, it essentially is an Avengers film. Like the only reason it's considered a Captain America film is because Cap is the one who's whose ideology is focused in on more. It's his kind of journey more than anyone else's, but then it kind of sort of becomes Iron Man's just as much as well. So yeah, it's an Avengers movie, simple as, and it's, it's great. It's really incredible. I love the fact that they have these two opposing sides and yet we don't know who to root for. They, they both have rights and wrongs on either side. And it's, it is it literally is a case of pick a side, anyone will do, because quite frankly, it's, it's, yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult to see whose side you should be on. Uh, I ultimately went with Cap, but again, that's because Cap's my guy. Uh, but yeah, it, it has a lot of emotional punch. I think the villain in it is really great. A lot of people weren't quite sold, but it's because he's not the big bombastic, you know, uh, costumed villain. It's because he's, he's a human being who's very clever. Uh, that's his strength, is his smarts, um, and yeah, he's just he wants to tear down the Avengers from within, he basically get them to do the work for him. And number three is Avengers: Infinity War. This is where it, you know it was all leading to this Infinity War and Endgame. Infinity War was the first time really that Thanos proper made his move. You know, this was going to be make or break. We've been building to Thanos for so long, is he going to work or is he just going to be a world dominator, boring villain like so many that we've had before in the MCU? And the answer to that question is no he's not and yes he does. He works. He works big time. Uh, not only does he work but you can kind of rationally see where he's coming from. His plan sort of makes sense. Uh, but yeah, great character work. The, this one, they have more characters to deal with than in any other Marvel movie up to this point. Um, and the Russo brothers absolutely nail it. And number two is Avengers Endgame, the most recent film obviously in the franchise. Again, just it hits on every level. It's so entertaining. All the characters get 
really great arcs, which, which you know, for a three hour movie, yeah, that actually three hours is a long time, but with this amount of characters, to give them all an arc that's satisfying, to pay off stories that have been going on for the whole of these 22 movies, um, to have real emotional beats with, with, with certain characters, kind of plot lines coming to an end and this, that and the other. It's just, it's, it's breathtaking. It really is breathtaking. It's daunting when you think about what the directors have to deal with, what the, the production crew and the writers, you know, like, let's get everyone together in a writer's room. We're going to figure this out. Okay, who's going to be that first guy who's, who puts his hand up in the writer's room and says, I've got an idea. It's like, man, it's just, it's just yeah. It's, it's a daunting challenge. And everyone that is involved in this process has done a real top-notch bang-up job. Avengers Endgame, possibly a better film than my number one choice even. Uh, but yeah, my number one choice, obviously you will have guessed because it, it's not appeared on the list, is Captain America. The Winter Soldier. Like I say, I've got no problem with anyone saying that Endgame or Infinity War is a better film, to be honest. Uh, I, I, I would understand why you would say that. For me, it's really all about, as I say, Captain America being my Avenger. He's the one I gravitate to, to towards the most. I think this is his, definitely his best solo outing. Um, I, I love the, the personal element between him and Bucky. I think Robert Redford plays a really great political kind of villain. Uh, I do love that political tone altogether. But it is because of, as much as I love those Avengers movies, especially considering how well they do them, with all the different characters, I do like having that one character to follow and root for. And because this is a, more of a solo movie and because Captain America is the one who's take, taking centre stage, I just gravitate towards it more. Um, you know, it, it is one of the best comic book movies ever made, in my opinion. Uh, uh, but again, pri primarily for me, the reason why it takes that number one spot is because I'm a Cap guy. This is a solo story for him and it's a solo story that is done damn well. Uh, so, yeah. There you go. That is my ranking. It's obviously not your ranking, but tell me what your ranking would be. Put them down below. Let me know uh, which choices of mine you think are totally whack and which ones you agree with. Uh, yeah, like I say, comment below. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you for watching this video. Sorry, it's quite a bit of a beast. Uh, 22 movies, though. Uh, thank you for watching, and until next time, cracking.